Gamers across the world will always look forward to the next big video game. It's what we think about and what we dream about when we're playing crappy games. So will State of Decay 2 be the next big exclusive for Microsoft? State of Decay 2 launches on May 22nd, just a few days down the road, and a lot of people are wondering if it's going to be that game. And it's a fair question for Xbox owners who don't have a lot of exclusive games to look forward to this year. State of Decay 2 is the second in this zombie survival franchise, the first game debuting back in 2013 on the Xbox and PC platforms. It had a respectable showing from critics, averaging around an 80, give or take where you look. A big group of people didn't really like it, others raved about it, including an incredibly high score from the Steam user front. So it's one of those mixed bag games leaning towards just being a pretty okay middle of the road kind of game. Nothing mind blowing, but if you're into stealth, action, survival, zombie kind of stuff, you may have had fun with the original, and for me, I definitely did. As one of the only Microsoft Xbox One exclusive games this year, State of Decay 2 had better do well, as Microsoft fans are craving some new games for their system, especially ones you can't get from Sony. In a time where the Sony PlayStation 4 has outsold the Xbox One 2 to 1 since the launch of both systems, the Xbox One really needs to ship more copies of their console. Microsoft needs a killer app this year, no question about it, especially since State of Decay 2 will be competing directly with Sony's next exclusive game, Detroit's Become Human, also releasing this month. So it's zombie survival action game versus futuristic interactive action adventure android game. Will State of Decay 2 pummel the competition to the ground or just be another zombie game destined for an early grave? That's the question gamers have been asking lately. The growing concern to many is that State of Decay 2 won't be that crown jewel or that next big game that they all want. Today we're going to look at that argument and examine what the gaming population is worried about with State of Decay 2, a game that Microsoft desperately needs to be good. I was one of those players who enjoyed the original State of Decay and I played it on the Xbox. I would consider it to be one of the better iterations of classic zombie survival stereotypes. It was developed by a small team and a small studio named Undead Labs, founded by a former Blizzard employer and co-founder of Arena.net, the makers of the acclaimed Guild Wars. Leading up to and after the release of State of Decay in 2013, it was basically an era of zombie survival games. These games were everywhere. Left 4 Dead 2, Dead Island, How to Survive, Seven Days to Die, Dying Light a few years later, Dead Z a few years earlier, Dead Rising 2 the same year, Dead Rising 3 the next year, Dead Island Riptide, Undead Nightmare, and I literally just scratched the surface with that list. Game fads come and go from platformers to modern military shooters to subscription style vanilla MMOs, and the zombie survival mania had its time during the early 2010s and it has slowly dwindled in popularity over the years. We've seen it all with this type of game, we've seen all the tricks. We've played them to death and back, and in 2018 we want these things from a zombie survival game. Polish and something new. In order to succeed as a game in this tired genre today, you had better deliver both if you want to catch our attention and our extended play beyond just a few hours. As we've seen with various other like games, the shelf life of a zombie game can be just a few hours or a few years depending on what it brings to the table and depending on how well the game is executed. I hope you can see my point. It's more important for State of Decay 2 to be good than it was for the original game to be good, as we've all grown as an audience through the countless iterations of prior zombie games. The industry has had years and years and years to get the formula right. So is State of Decay 2 going to bring that much needed innovation and refinement to be not just a good game, but the killer app this year? This is where the worry starts. One of the immediate concerns with gamers today is that there is very little known about State of Decay 2, nor is there much gameplay footage out there. When you consider the game is set to release in mere days, that's a problem. Pre-release content is important for people to filter out which games they like and which games they do not like and they're going to take a pass on. It's also important for people to compare what the game has to offer versus prior installments, in this case the original State of Decay. The best pre-release videos we have out there right now on this game are heavily branded though and limited in what they can show us. Meaning, very specific chunks of the game have been put together for the big shot media firms like IGN and GameSpot. These are self-promoted videos that are paid directly by Microsoft. 
yes, most of the preview videos you see out there for games that haven't come out yet are actually not done for free. After all, it's advertising, and advertising costs a lot of money. While this is common in the industry, many of these videos remain very non-opinionated, simply listing off features rather than giving any real criticism. Sadly, that's just the way the industry works, but it would have been nice to get some pre-release footage that wasn't so corporate mumbo-jumbo feeling. The excuse that the game is a work in progress is normally acceptable, however the game is mere days away, so I don't really buy that. The videos that I did find that weren't so hotty toddy actually had very little to say about the game in fact. Mostly just rough gameplay, no commentary or opinion. Unfortunately, all of the missions most likely hand-selected by Microsoft to restrict what is shown and what is not shown. It's these videos that are not really much use to anyone in the end because A, there's not much opinion, and B, it's clearly scripted. While I think some pre-release videos are inherently good to check out basic gameplay, I often don't think they are as valuable as people believe them to be, considering how it's basically controlled advertising. I've also found quite a few articles bagging State of Decay 2, most notably this article by GameSpot, saying that the game is aimless and the loop of exploration and defense gets old quick. A multitude of bugs and poor presentation is also noted. Obviously this is why people are rightfully worried about the game. After all, how much of this can be actually fixed in just a few days? Players want to see a high level of evolution of gameplay from the first game. The original State of Decay made good use of the zombie theme, allowing players to recruit survivors across the map, yet they could permanently die, which made the whole game really tactical and filled with tension. Like it or not, the game was more about the open world, the story being nearly non-existent and serving mostly as background noise. State of Decay 2 brings back most of those familiar elements, including looting, building, crafting, an RPG-like leveling system, scavenging, backpacks, and more. It's going to debut for $30, which is kind of strange, yet kind of understandable at the same time. The price tag basically says that State of Decay 2 is a mid-tier game, and that we should hold our expectations to that price tag. $30 games often come with a lot less of that AAA feel as the $60 game, and State of Decay 2 is looking to fit that bill. The graphics and animations were never anything special in the original game, often being quite stiff and last gen. However, State of Decay 2 looks a little bit better, but who knows what the final version will be like. The most touted feature for the new game is co-op, allowing you to play with your friends to help you survive and build out your community. You can share loot and help each other carry items via dual backpack management. Many gamers are looking forward to this, although this feature could alienate players that don't have real life friends to play with, because traditionally, Playing by yourself in these types of games is definitely not as much fun as playing with friends. The hope is that the developers of State of Decay 2 are making the game fun for both types of players and are not simply going to fall back on the excuse of, well, it's better with friends if the single player component actually isn't that much fun. News articles have labeled the co-op as a good idea in theory, yet not realized well. As the number one big new feature in this game, that makes me worried. The other big new feature is the Blood Plague, which is an infection that will kill you if your bar fills up with enough of the virus. Lastly, this game will get dark. Really fucking dark. Darkness in State of Decay 2 will envelop you, requiring you to lean on your trusty flashlight during the night. It is assumed that the game will also be more challenging when the night falls, akin to something like Dying Light. For me, State of Decay 2 is looking just okay. But really, every feature touted by the developer for this new version is standard. Co-op. New weapons, a better looking world, nighttime difficulty. That's nothing really dramatic jumping out at me. These reasons are why people are worried about State of Decay 2, that it's just gonna be another okay zombie survival game, not the mind blowing killer app that Xbox fans have been craving for for so long. The fact that no one is really talking about this game beyond the odd preview video may be something we should also be thinking about as well. And the fact that people are not holding the best opinions those who are expressing their opinions online. That's a problem too. Usually the big games of the year are magnets for hype and excitement. Are people excited for State of Decay 2 in the way that they should be? Here's a quote from GameSpot that I'll leave you with which is basically what this video is all about. It doesn't yet feel like State of Decay 2 has meaningfully built upon the promising core of its predecessor. You let me know if that makes you worried or not. And if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to this channel for more of our future content on Downward Thrust. Have a great day, and we'll see you guys in our next video.